Yesterday, I mentioned how metallic elements kind of like to hang out together in various rocks and sediment, ores and minerals, and today's element is another to support that claim. Today's element is niobium, and it actually used to be called columbium after the mineral columbite. If that sounds familiar, it is because columbite is a part of coltan, which if you remember from day one of this week, is mined in the Congo to produce tantalum. And you might remember that I mentioned in yesterday's element video, rhenium. Rhenium can also be found in columbite, along with iron, manganese, magnesium, and I'm sure others have been detected in it as well, just hanging around. Most of the elements this week are in the transition metals group of the periodic table, and they have a lot of similarities, not just that you might not have heard of them. Niobium was discovered in 1901 as columbium, but it was so similar to tantalum, this week's first element, that it wasn't until 1925 that someone really grasped the element and actually renamed it niobium. And I'll get into the etymology of this because it's kind of fun. When the element was discovered and first named columbium, it was obviously named for the mineral it was found in, columbite, and tantalum as well was named for the mineral tantalite, which itself was named for Tantalus, a mythological Greek king and one of the many sons of Zeus. So when columbium proved to be so similar to tantalum, they actually renamed it niobium because they were naming it after Niobe, the daughter of Tantalus in Greek mythology. I think that's kind of cool. As is true for many of these lesser known transition metals, niobium is used as an alloy, meaning it's one of many metals that have been combined to make a super metal. Metals when they're together in an alloy tend to be a lot stronger and more durable than if they're by themselves. For example, niobium is used in super alloys for jet and rocket engines. And actually in that thing in the back there, because of its superior temperature stability. And by superior, I mean its melting point, which is the temperature that it will melt, is 4,491 degrees Fahrenheit. Hence its use in rocket engines. To give you a comparison, gold melts at 1,948 degrees, still, still a lot, and lead only 621 degrees, no big deal. It's also a superconductor, which means it's used in crazy powerful magnets, in things like this giant machine behind me, the Large Hadron Collider. Okay, well that is all for Niobium. Thank you for watching today's video as always. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to be talking about technetium.